Welcome to My Amino, and today we are going to talk about a very serious subject, the false audio file. Before we get into the details of this video, I want to make it very clear that I've backed up every claim I make here with links to either the videos or the articles that I claim these people have made, and they are in the description below. So if you question anything that I say here about a specific person, please check the links before you tell me that that's not true. Now, also click the subscribe button so you're aware of future videos. I will be making more videos as I find more false audio files out there. So you want to be aware of who is a false audio file and who's real. So click the link and I will tell you so that you don't have to follow these people any longer. I've been told before that I'm a little too subtle when it comes to all things audio file, but I want to make this as clear as possible. No subtlety involved. False audio files are as dangerous to you as anything else in the world. They are more dangerous than a violent criminal or runaway inflation. Because while a violent criminal or runaway inflation can ruin your earthly life, your entire pursuit of audio nirvana can be ruined by false audio files. They are the most dangerous people in the world. I hope that's not too subtle for anybody, okay? That's just as clear as it can be. One of the other great issues with the false audio file is that they look as much as they can like real audio files. They'll have exotic equipment, they'll talk about cables and their liquid capabilities, and they will tell you that you are on the path to audio nirvana. But in the end, their only goal is their own profit or worse, turning you away from your goal of becoming an audiophile. Now I've studied false audiophiles for decades and I felt it was a disservice to you, the audiophile community, and actually a disservice to the world not to talk about the five ways to determine how to see a false audiophile. And it's also very important to remember that failing just one of these methods makes you a false audiophile. So if you go out and say, hey, this guy, he's great on one, two, four, and five, and he fails on three, but he's kind of okay. No, he's not. He's a false audiophile, and you should never listen to him again. Method one, false audiophiles refuse to call out sin when they see it, or should I say better, hear it. If they review a thousand products, there's a thousand products that they like or will give you some excuse for why you should put it on your, quote, short list. If everything is worth the price of admission, if everything is, quote, worth a listen, if everything should be on your short list, this is a false audiophile. These are people who are preaching for greed and profit and care not about you reaching your goal. One example would be Dr. Ken Tarazka who wrote the infamous article about the Lexicon BD30 SACD Blu-ray player, which ended up being nothing more than an oppo with a new skin on it. I mean, nothing. It was proven as the identical same thing. Yet it had a $3,000 price increase, and he recommended this for no other reason than he was a false audiophile. Another is Herb Reichert of Stereophile, who reviewed the Totem Stereo One speakers, which have resonances that could shake off a small animal sitting on top of your speaker. And not only did he recommend this as quote unquote highly recommended, but he even convinced Stereophile to put this on their components recommended list. These are just two examples of reviewers who call themselves audiophiles, but literally cannot find anything wrong with the equipment they are listening to. And it's not because there's nothing wrong with the equipment they're listening to, it's because they are there for greed and profit. Method number two, false audiophiles don't care if you don't believe. A true audiophile will happily debate and discuss the value of cables and cable lifters with anyone. The false audiophile 
will shy away from this debate. The false audiophile will use words that make them look like they're taking the high road, when in reality, they're only avoiding the discussion. Steve Gutenberg proved he was a false audiophile in his video, Don't Buy Expensive Cables, that if you don't hear the difference between expensive high-end cables and generic cables, then that's okay. No, Steve, that's not okay. That's no different than someone urinating on the Bible or the Quran and saying, hey, that's okay. The fact is that no true audiophile would ever accept that anyone could not hear the difference between cables and cable lifters. That no one could hear the difference between generic cables and high-end cables, like for example, first-run copper. Everyone can hear the difference in cables. Well, maybe not deaf people or people who are hard of hearing, but, but everyone with normal hearing can hear the difference in cables and cable lifters. Number three, false audiophiles will encourage you to abandon audiophilia. These are the greatest deceivers and the most difficult to detect because they sound as if they're giving you good advice, usually with the ideas of a budget audio system. They spew dangerous ideas like, if you like it, it's good enough. These are the words of abandonment to get you to stop your journey to the promised land. Andrew Robinson told his viewers in a video entitled, High-End Audio versus Budget Gear, The Law of Diminishing Returns in Hi-Fi, that, and I quote, if you are using any type of source purely as a transport, in which case a $100 CD player will do it for you because you're going to connect it digitally. So anybody selling a high ticket transport, I don't understand. Now let's ignore the terrible English of Andrew Robinson there. And let's get to the point of what he's saying. He's saying that a $100 CD player, if it's being used completely as a transport and only as a transport, is good enough. Well, Andrew, I've got news for you. My interconnects between my transport and the rest of my system cost 20 times more than $100, okay? That's just my cables. So don't tell me my CD player for 100 bucks is gonna be good enough. Now, if Andrew Robinson or anybody else doesn't understand the importance of extremely expensive gear to be used as your transport, they're a false audiophile. Number four, false audiophiles will be wrong. It's that simple. A true audiophile will never be wrong about audio or audio products, ever. False audiophiles will try to mask their previous errors with things like, oh, new technology or some other type of trick or method to convince you that, yeah, they were wrong a year ago or two years ago or even five years ago, but that's only because we didn't have this new technology out today. Wrong. Either it sounds that good or it doesn't sound that good. It's not like, oh, I never knew it could sound that good. That's almost like saying you never heard live sound before, never been to a concert. Rick Beato told his 2.3 million subscribers in a video entitled, Audiophile or Audio Fooled, How Good Are Your Ears? That you can't hear the difference between an MP3 and an uncompressed, video, uh, uncompressed audio file. He then used one person in the video who wasn't even a trained listener to listen to the two files under a short-term stressful test. Lo and behold, she didn't get them right. Well, Rick Beato is wrong. I can hear the difference between two of the exact same audio files, both uncompressed, identical. There's no difference between the file. If my mom moved my cable lifters an inch after she was vacuuming my room. And MP3s, they literally Give me a gag reflex. I will vomit listening to an MP3. I walked into a party the other day with a few people and someone was playing their MP3s off a phone and I just literally went right to the bathroom and threw up and then I had to leave that party. That's how bad an MP3 sounds to me. It actually gives me a gag reflex. So um, don't tell me, Rick Beato, that I can't hear the difference between uncompressed 
files and an MP3. Because you you put me in that room and put those headphones on me, you better have a barf bag ready for me because I'm going to be going up all over your floor. The fifth and final method to determine a false audio file is a false audio file can be determined by their lifestyle choice. More specifically, the audio room in which they listen to music. Is their room designed for audiophile nirvana? Or is it designed as idol worship to the products that they talk about and write about? These false audiophiles don't care about sound. They care about the visual products that make the sound you listen to. And we all know that sound cannot be seen. In a video called Michael Fremer Stereophile, available on YouTube, link in the description, he actually shows you his room. Michael Fremer does not care about audio quality. He cares about audio products. He's a false audiophile. Just look at this picture. It's clear this man worships the products and not the sound. Or he'd have done something about his room decades ago. In essence, false audiophiles create distortion around the idea of audiophilia. While true audiophiles, like myself, never waver from the goal. So please remember, when you are reading articles or watching videos, that you are wary of the huge number of charlatans that are out there. It's sad when so many people watch Steve Gutenberg, Michael Fremer, Rick Beato, and Andrew Robinson, that they don't realize these men are false audiophiles. But for you watching this video, use these five methods to determine who's a real audiophile and who's false, and stay away from the false audiophiles. They are trying to lead you away from the path of audio nirvana. Thanks, and please subscribe to my channel. I will be calling out more false audiophiles as I find them on YouTube and on the web.